In the very beginning, we kind of looked at what was missing from our game. That's where, for instance, the idea of uh, the new animation systems, like to be able to move through the world in a different way, we felt was we had been missing that. And so the same thing with character customization is we felt we were missing this ability to tie you in as a player, as a person, into the character that you were playing. It didn't even start with character customization so much as customization. There was a time when it was just going to be weapon customization or, you know, view model customization. And we especially felt like with a lot of our fans, we have so many fans, they're not even gamers. It's got to be someone's going to come up with this, but a, a new genre of person. A gamer to me is someone who plays ga video games and loves games and knows things about all kinds of games and stuff like that. But for a lot of Call of Duty players, they're, they don't play games. They only play Call of Duty. And I've talked to a lot of guys and um, sports guys too. Like we had a baseball player in here not long ago and I go, hey, so what, what kind of games do you play? And he goes, oh, I'm, I, re I don't play any games really. I, 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 I play Call of Duty and I play uh, a golf game and that's it. And I go, oh, do you play a lot? And he goes, every day. So um, they're not gamers, but they might actually play more than gamers. Um, so I don't know if they're where that classification of that kind of person is. Why do you think they do that? What, what's going on with your series? <laughs> How is it roping in these people? I, I don't know. I really don't. I mean, I wish I could tell you, but it's one of those weird things where um, we have, I talk to so many people who all they play is Call of Duty and like a sports game, whether it's Madden or FIFA or something like that. But that's all they play. They'll play year round, and when the next one comes out, they buy that one and play that. The thing with, with that group, though, is it may actually be the majority of our players, mm -hmm. and yet they are the least vocal. They don't probably know what a ga video, any game sites. They probably don't know who Infinity Ward is, or even would be able to tell you, you know, what the developer of a video game is. Mm -hmm. They would probably say, oh, Activision made that game, potentially. I just, I think that that group doesn't care and doesn't, isn't interested in gaming as a culture or as a, a as an art form. They just love to play Call of Duty and they might be really damn good at it too, especially if they're playing, you know, every day. But the, for them, it's more of a, it's less about gaming and more about the social experience or the entertainment, you know, come home from a day of work and just relax, play some Call of Duty. A lot of people I talk to, uh, fathers who, you know, play with their kids, that's sort of father-son time. I couldn't classify it, and, I, and there's so many of them that I don't understand, you know, I wouldn't be able to touch upon what everybody everybody is, but it's an interesting group because they, they literally don't really have a voice, um, and yet we're trying to get their voice from them, you know, we're trying to engage with those, with people like that. Yeah, they don't really go out of their way to, to say anything, or and they're very happy. They like what they're doing. They like the game. They enjoy it. They buy it every year. They're not overly critical of things too, too much. They're more of, I like playing, so I'm going to play. And they don't really think about anything else. Hardcore players, like really hardcore players, competitive players, are there for the competitive, hardcore nature of it. You know, they're, they're, they have something that they grasp onto. The casual players, although, like I said, they play every game, we wanted to give them something that they felt maybe more investment for them. And character customization seemed to be one of those things that maybe those casual players would latch onto more. Mm -hmm. Am I right on that? Again, because I don't know who this group is exactly, and I don't know how to, we don't necessarily know what their feelings are because they don't share them. You know, we're taking a little bit of a, a design guess at it, but. When we went to do character customization, it wasn't a thought of, finally, now we can get girls in the game and they'll play. And it was, okay, now we can um, make characters that represent us. And us was multiple races, multiple genders. It wasn't a gimmicky thing of trying to add females. It was a inclusive thing. It was trying to make sure that we got all of our fans as much as possible uh, included into the process, into character customization. It's interesting because it's yeah. another RPG element mm -hmm. that Call of Duty is absorbing. And I think mm -hmm. the last time you guys did that was Call of Duty 4, and it turned out yeah. really well for you guys. <laughs> so do you see it as that yeah. RPG inspiration? Uh, yeah, definitely a, a bit, yeah. yeah. Um, it was definitely about you know creating, yeah, creating an avatar, which is what you do in MMOs. You create an avatar, and you care about that avatar. Yeah, so there's definitely an aspect of that. And 
a lot of the guys who started, you know, who were on COD 4, for instance, were heavy MMO pl players too. And I remember the lead MP guy and I used to have this thing where we always would go and play the weirdest, craziest MMOs that we could find. Whatever it was, if an MMO came out of any kind, even some of the Korean ones, and then we'd go play it, and then we'd come back and be like, okay, did you see that thing? The way they handled their inventory was really interesting and found ideas, basically, through studying MMOs a lot. Why MMOs and not just RPGs or JRPGs? Um, it, I think it's because of the added multiplayer aspect of it you know we did the rpg thing too actually so we we used to play a lot of rpgs just in general but a lot of it was was yeah the, getting the multiplayer aspect of it you know, oh the way that you could level your character when you were playing mp which in some mmos you can't do but in some you can a lot of that kind of stuff ended up being inspirational for us and sometimes that inspiration wasn't mmos sometimes it was fighting games so street fighter 3 was a huge inspiration for um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Street Fighter 3? Or Street Fighter um, 4, sorry. Okay. Player cards came from Street Fighter. So Street Fighter 4 had, you could earn, by completing challenges, you could earn different sort of emblems and player card type stuff, you know, backgrounds for your character name. We melded that into the player cards. We didn't have player cards before that until we played Street Fighter, so. Come, inspiration comes from strange places.